Hey everybody, this is Lava Niadua here just to uh, share a short devotional thought with you. Well, recently we've been through some uh, pretty uh, horrendous times as a nation, have we not? Uh, first with the whole situation with coronavirus and the devastation that that brought to us. And then more recently with the whole racism issue. So um, I've also just been studying over the last uh, couple of months just in the whole area of neuroscience as to how people um, respond to trauma. How do people respond and react and how can they come out of trauma? And what I found is that neuroscientists and um, many uh, doctors, psychologists who have studied this area say that when we, when human beings face trauma, we usually um, react in one of three ways. First of all, we can fall apart. We can just uh, just uh, end up thinking that everything is hopeless and we just can get very down and despondent. The second response is that we can just say and have this attitude that we're going to bounce back. We're going to survive. We're going to come back to how we were before. And, you know, there are some songs like I'm a survivor, which uh, sort of um, lead into that. And even uh, it's a very British saying, isn't it? When someone says, hey, how are you? And we can respond, oh, I'm surviving. And so that that is uh, another response. But there's a third response. And all the uh, scientists and psychologists say that People with this particular response are the ones who do well when they are faced with any kind of traumatic or difficult situation. And it's those people who make a decision to thrive. So it's really what they are doing is they're embracing a thriving mindset. And neuroscience and psychologists have various uh, suggestions and ideas of how we can all adopt a thrive mindset but I just want to tell you that as believers, we actually have an advantage in this area. And do you know what the advantage is? It is that God is with us. God is for us. And you can see throughout the Bible, again and again, people of God, when, the, when they believed that God was in them and God was indeed in them, upon them, he gave them great favor. He caused them to prosper. A great story is, of course, the story of Joseph. And even if you looked at um, Genesis chapter uh, 39 and 40, again and again, it says the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord gave him favor. Uh, whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. And uh, when we look at the story of Joseph, we can see that even though he went through tremendous difficulties, and he was in lockdown for many, many years. The Bible doesn't say exactly for how long. But what it does say is that in that time of lockdown, what he did was he served. It actually says that in uh, Genesis 40 verse 4, that he served the captain of the guard. And, and in that serving, he actually connected with people. He developed his prophetic gift with people. As you know, he interpreted dreams in prison. So that, amazingly, when the day came when Pharaoh needed his dream to be interpreted, they couldn't think of anyone except Joseph because he had been operating in his gift even in lockdown. And why could he operate in his gift? Because God was with him. Um, you know, Psalm 27 has this great verse which says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I would say to you, number one a response to get a thrive mindset is to say, I am going to see the goodness of God. I am coming out stronger. I'm coming out better from this lock lockdown. I don't know how it's all going to look. There are no guarantees from anybody, but I know that because God is for me, he is with me. He will cause me to have favor. He will cause me to prosper. And I'll just leave you with this final thought. Um, and it's from Ephesians and it's from the message version. Uh, it's pretty amazing. But in chapter 3, in verses 20 to 21, Paul writes, 
God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He doesn't do it by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. So the key there is that you can't even imagine what God can do for you as you come out of lockdown. It, it maybe has never occurred to you some of the things that he has in store for you. But all we can do is to yield to the Holy Spirit. And in that same Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writes early on, and he actually writes this as if he's actually praying for the Ephesians. But we can make this our prayer. And he says, basically, to get down on our knees and ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us. Just ask. And then it says, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength will come. Not only that, but we will start to understand the dimensions of how Christ loves us. And from that, we will live lives that are full, full of the fullness of God. Full of fullness. What a great thought to end with today. And so I just pray for you. So God, I just pray that for every person watching today, you will fill them afresh with the Holy Spirit. You will fill them afresh so that they know and they can understand and comprehend, comprehend the amazing love that Jesus has for them, for all of us. And Lord, I just thank you that they are filled with the fullness so that when they go forth today, Lord, that they will understand all that you have for them. They will believe that the favor of God is upon them and that they will thrive. Okay, church. God bless you. Have a great day.